Welcome to the broadcast ministry of Irvington Bible Baptist Church, located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Join us for today's Bible study with Pastor Paul Mayles. Well, take your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. We're going to be a little bit in the New Testament, a lot of bit in the Old Testament this morning. But the title of the message is how important are you? So if you get 1 Corinthians chapter 3, how important are you? And uh, I Google searched that that term last night. I Google searched the term, quote unquote, how to know if you are important. It returned 2.6 billion results. 2.6 2.6 billion. I'm pretty sure. I get a little confused when you get that many zeros after a number because I've never seen that before. But uh, 2.6 billion results for uh, how to know uh, if you are important. Uh, people, a lot of times, they, they like to act like they don't really care about what other people think. But uh, those results would show you that uh, actually it must be on their mind all the time. Right? How important are they? And uh, uh, even a lot of times, people people uh, will discount how important they actually are in a lot of situations and things. And that's what we want to look at here today. How important are you, anyway? First uh, Corinthians chapter three. Uh, we're going to read verses five through eight and uh, see what the Apostle Paul uh, says here. Of course, uh, here in First Corinthians chapter three. Uh, there was a dispute among uh, uh, the church there, within the church. Uh, some people were saying they were following Apollos. Other people were saying they were following Paul. And uh, they were kind of contending with, with one another as to, as to who was who is better or what have you. And this is what Paul had to say about it. Paul said in verse 5, Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So if you just look at that verse and and take take it aside and everything, it makes it look like it says, well, I guess you're just not very important at all. And uh, that's taking that out of context a little bit. And that's not really what the Apostle Paul was saying anyhow. I mean, there in verse 7, he said that neither Apollos or himself were anything, but it's God that gives the increase. And that's true. It is God that gives the increase. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are and what it is that you do. If God's not in the thing, it's not going to increase. It's not going to show any profit. It's not going to be fruitful at all. But uh, that that statement is true. However, that does not mean that uh, we don't matter to the work of the Lord, because we do. And that's what we want to look at here today. And ultimately, we're going to end up over in the book of Numbers. And uh, I am hoping to be able to show you some things with the sons of Levi and kind of relate that to us in the church today. And uh, we're going to see uh, how important uh, you actually are. All right, servanthood. So we're servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we're called to be his servants. And and to be a servant, or servanthood as defined, is a state of being the servant of others. Go figure. Uh, I love it when people use the word that you're looking for the definition of, and they use the word in the definition. Like that, oh, that's solved. Thank you, Mr. Webster. That's awesome. This is how Webster's 1828, by the way. Uh, the state of being the servant of others, especially of God. Scripture stresses the privileges and responsibilities of being a servant of God and points to Jesus Christ as the model of servanthood. And of course, we know from Philippians chapter 2 that the Lord took upon himself the uh, the form of man and humbled himself and uh, uh, became a servant. And uh, he is our ultimate example. So that is true. Uh, but uh, what, what I want to see here, and go ahead and turn back to Numbers. We'll be in Numbers. Um, Go ahead and just go to chapter 4, Numbers chapter 4. And uh, we won't read through, you know, the entire chapters that that uh, we're looking at 
here today, um, but uh, we will be looking through quite a quite a bit of it, to be honest, just so we can see some things here. There, there are different duties in the ministry, and it's always been that way. It's always been that way, that there, there, there's always been different duties in the ministry, and that's demonstrated here by the sons of Levi. Now, Levi, as you know, uh, had uh, three sons, or maybe you didn't know, now you do. Levi had three sons, okay? Uh, he, his sons were Koath, uh, Gershon, and Merari. Those were his three sons. And uh, from that, you get the Koathites, the Gershonites, and I guess the Merariites. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that's what you get there. And, uh, but, and they each had different duties to perform. So we know that the Levites, the Lord separated the Levites aside, and they were to be the priests, right? They would be the priests. Moses and Aaron were from the tribe of Levi. And they were to be the priests. But not all the priests, quote unquote priests, not all the priests had the exact same duty to do. I think a lot of times we think to ourselves, well, Levi, the Levites were the priests, so they were all the priests, and, and they all did what the Bible says that Aaron was to do. That all the Levites did what Aaron did, right? That all the Levites were, you know, in line to be the high priest. All the Levites were to do the sacrifices and 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 and, and all the things that had to do uh, with the uh, the duties of quote unquote the Levites in general. That all of the Levites participated in all those things. There was no difference from uh, those of Koath to those of Merari, right? But that's not true. They each had their own distinct responsibilities as Brother Webster said, servitude, we have different responsibilities and things that go along with being a servant. And they each had their own specific responsibilities and things that they could do and things that they could not do. And even if they were in the family of things that they could do, if they didn't do what they could do the right way that they were supposed to do what they could do, there was a penalty to pay for that. So we're going to look at some of those things here Today, so let's start off here. Okay, so there's different duties. There are different duties uh, for the Levitical priesthood. Uh, each of those families had specific duties that they were supposed to do, but all those duties came under the duties that Aaron had. So we have to look at Aaron's duties first. What were Aaron's duties? Numbers chapter four. We'll read verses five through fifteen. Numbers chapter 4, verse 5 says, And when the camp set it forward, uh, so in other words, when the camp was getting ready to move, when the camp was moving forward, when the, when the camp was accomplishing some things and moving forward, when the camp set it forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badger skins, and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof. And upon the table of showbread they shall spread a cloth of blue, and put thereon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover withal. And the continual bread shall be thereon. And they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with a covering of badger skins, and shall put in the staves thereof. And they shall take a cloth of blue, and cover the candlestick of the light, and his lamps, and his tongs, and his snuff dishes, and all the oil ves vessels thereof, wherewith they minister unto it. And they shall put it and all the vessels thereof within a covering of badger skins, and shall put it upon a bar. And upon the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue, and cover it with a covering of badger skins, and shall put to the staves thereof. And they shall take all the instruments of ministry, wherewith they minister in the sanctuary, and put them in a cloth of blue, and cover them with a covering of badger skins, and shall put them on a bar. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar, and spread a purple cloth thereon. And they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof, wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks, and the shovels, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar. And they shall spread upon it a covering of badger skins, and put to the staves of it. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward, after that the sons of Koash shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch 
any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Koath in the tabernacle of the congregation. So you're saying, what's going on here? Okay, so what's going on is they're getting ready. So, 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 so I guess back up, rewind a little bit or something, I don't know. But it always bothers me that people today feel like they can just worship God any old way that they want to. They can do whatever they want. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter where they go or how they go or what, what Bible they use or how they dress or what their attitude is or anything else. They just feel, well, it doesn't matter because you can just do whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you go back and you, you study the Word of God and you see especially back here where, where the Lord started all this stuff off, He is very, very specific about how everything was to be accomplished. I understand that's the Old Testament. We're in the old in, in the New Testament, rather. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not under the law. and we're, we, we, we have grace and all those things, and all that is true. But the Lord is very specific about how He wanted to be worshipped and how He wanted things to occur. I mean, He, he started off there with, with Moses and, and told Moses exactly how it is that He was supposed to... Uh, uh, manufacture all these things, right? The ark and the mercy seat and the, the, the tables for the show bread and the candlestick and, and, and everything else that, that went along with it, the laver and, and everything else of, 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 of water and everything where they washed before they went in. Well, what, what, what kind of material, the, 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 uh, the covering of the tabernacle, the tent, if you will, the tabernacle was supposed to be made out of and, and the coverings of, that went all the way around around the tabernacle and things, you know, they had like the courtyard and things, and they had they had basically a fence around it that was that was, you know, covered with different different cloths and, and different coverings. And he was very specific about how all that stuff was supposed to be put together. And then not only that, uh, as Aaron and his sons were doing the ministry, there was very specific ways how they were supposed to accomplish the ministry as far as how they were supposed to be dressed. And, and they were supposed to uh, wash before they entered in and, and, and all these very specific things, right? The Lord didn't even just say, hey, uh, for this thing, you need to sacrifice the lamb. And I think a lot of times Americans might just think, okay, well, they're just sacrificing the lamb. They killed the lamb. They threw it on the fire. And, you know, they, they roasted marshmallows. I don't know what Americans think, but th that's, not, that's not what happened. The, the Lord was very specific. You have to take this lamb of this kind of a lamb, this old of a lamb, and then you have to you have to kill it a specific way, and a certain uh, certain people had to be present, and they had something that they had to do, and this is what you do with the blood, and this is what you do with these parts, and this is what you do with those parts, and and the parts you're not going to use, this is how you dispose of them, and where you have to dispose of them at, and 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 then this, this is what you do, and then a lot of these, all this stuff you talk meat offering, meat offering, meat offering, and the meat offerings were never meat; it was always like grain and cakes and stuff, and it's like I don't even know what that means, but he that that's the way he had things set up. Right, very specific ways. Even all the way to, down to the point where, after the burnt uh, offerings were done and over with, very specific things that they were supposed to do with the ashes afterwards. But yeah, we could just do whatever we want. That's not to mention this. They're just moving. They're just moving. It's like the Lord is like, okay, yeah, uh, you've been here long enough. Let's go to the next spot and uh, let's pack up and go. And they didn't even get to pick and choose how they packed up. The Lord told them exactly how to pack up and who was allowed to do what when they packed up and they moved on. And that's what we're looking at here. So Aaron had the specific duties of things that Aaron was supposed to do, right? Aaron uh, and, and his sons only were allowed to pack up the tabernacle, the holy things. They were the only ones. Koath, it says here, after Aaron did everything that Aaron was doing, Koath was allowed to carry the stuff onward he was, he was able to bear the work, but he wasn't able to do the work. That's what's going on here. Aaron, in the Bible, is uh, he's made the high priest in Exodus chapter 4 and verse number 13. And uh, he is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is our high priest, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verses uh, 14 and 15, and 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. Jesus is our high priest. He's our priest. He's our mediator. So what a priest was, a, be, a priest was a mediator. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 5, there's one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. He's our high priest. Aaron was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. So all the things that Aaron was doing here, uh, uh, the ministry that Aaron had was, was, is typified of the work that the Lord Jesus Christ does on our behalf. He's the one that uh, uh, made the sacrifice. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for us, right? So on and so forth. 
So, so Aaron was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ here. So only Aaron could do the work that Aaron had to do, uh, just like only Jesus Christ could do the work that Jesus Christ had to do for us. We can't do the work ourselves. We can't earn our own way into heaven. Only the high priest could do that. Only Jesus could do that. So there were things that only Aaron could do. Only Aaron could complete the duties of the high priest. If you look back real quick, just, just uh, one chapter back, Numbers chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, you're going to see what happens here when Aaron's two oldest sons uh, stepped out of line. They stepped out of line. They were Aaron's sons. They were in the right line. But they didn't approach things properly. Numbers chapter 3, verses 1 through 4 says, These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. But Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. They're in the right line. They didn't do the right thing, though. They didn't do the right thing, and it cost them their life. No, no one else can perform the duties of the high priest. Nobody else can perform the duties of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said there in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me, period. Nobody else can, can do those, those duties. Uh, now, in order to be a servant, first and foremost, the thing that you need to do to, to become a servant of the Lord is uh, you have to uh, you, you have to be in the family. You have to get saved. You have to get saved. If you never accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, you can't be a servant. You can't you can't be you. you really, none none of the rest of this this message really even applies to you at all. The first thing you got to do is you got to get things fixed. You got to accept the uh, free gift that the Lord is offering you for eternal life. Once you do that, then you're called to be a servant. Then you're called to be a servant. Uh, then you can be counted in the number. Uh, Numbers chapter 1, verses uh, 2 and 3. We won't look at all these references just for the sake of time. But Numbers chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Uh, the Lord is calling people to be in his army. And he says that he's calling everybody from 20 years old up to 50 years old. The, they were to be counted in the number. And if you're going to be counted in the number, the only thing that is required is for you to be in the family. And the way you get in the family is put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him and him alone. Jesus said, uh, uh, as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Amen? All right. You have to be in the family. But over in Numbers chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, as he's talking about those who are able to be servants called to a specific, a specific, a specific service, a specific service, uh, there was a little bit different of a requirement for them. Because over here in Numbers chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Take the sum of the sons of Koath from among the sons of Levi after their families by the house of their fathers from 30 years old and upward, even until 50 years old. So, so you could be a, a soldier in the Lord's army at 20 years old. You're born into the family, 20 years old. But then it took 10 years after you were in the army, after you were in the family, it took 10, 10 years of preparation before you uh, could go out and have your own service, your own ministry, as it were. Uh, so, so that's what the Lord has going on here. If you look over in Numbers chapter 8, again, we won't turn over there, but Numbers chapter 8, verses 23 and 24, the Lord says that there's something that some, some folks were allowed to do after they turned 25 years old. So from 20 to 25, their job was to observe what was going on and just to be in the ministry and to be around the ministry and see what was going on in the ministry. And after they were 25, until they were 30, then they were to participate in the ministry. So, so it's kind of sort of like an apprenticeship, if you will, something like that. And then once they were 30 years old, then they could actually start their ministry, hence why the Lord Jesus Christ started his ministry when he was 30 years old. So what's my point? My point is in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6, the Bible says that uh, 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 bishops, they, they cannot be a novice. You can't be a novice and, and uh, uh, be called into a uh, servanthood situation and to have your own ministry. You, you can serve un, under other, other folks, but uh, you're, not, you're not to just take off and, 
and start your own. You got people all the time trying to start their own ministries and do their own thing and, and do it their own way. Well, that's what Nadab and Abihu tried to do. You see how that worked out for them? It cost them their lives. They died. You say, well, will the Lord kill somebody because they, they try to start a ministry too soon? I don't know that the Lord will kill them. He could, depending on what they're doing. Uh, but, uh, but, but one thing for sure, most likely their ministry is going to die if they get things out of order. You want to keep things in order. Keep things in order. Uh, it, the most important thing to the ministry isn't that somebody is just a, a genius and intelligent and, and knows all this information. The most important thing in ministry, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, is spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is necessary. It's necessary. Now, the Bible talks about there are four offices that the Lord set up in Ephesians chapter 4. There are four offices that the Lord set up. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 12. You have these four offices, okay? And those four offices are apostles, prophets, evangelists, and preachers and teachers, pastors and teachers. Pastors and teachers, that's one office. Pastors are supposed to be able to teach some things. Um, th those are the four offices, okay? And uh, that's basically, spiritually speaking, where Koath falls in the spectrum of things. This is how we're going to relate this to us today. What, what does all this mean to us, and how do we apply this to our lives? Okay, Koath is, 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 is the, uh, the ones who were called to a specific office. Okay. Koath, in, in, uh, I mean, if I could draw and stuff, I could, I could draw you this really nice picture and everything, but the way the tabernacle was and the way all, all the families were told where their camp was supposed to be specifically orientated around the tabernacle and all that stuff, that was all planned out by the Lord. They didn't just say, hey, I like that spot over there. It looks flat. It, it's it's kind of high, so it's not going to flood out. And it doesn't look like there's any tree roots in the way. And no, the Lord said, no, your family camps there. Right? It, it's, it, it's like if you go to a campground, you know, if you go to a campground to go camping, you don't get to pick where you want to camp. They tell you where you're going to camp. It's awful. It's terrible. You better off just go out in the woods somewhere and pick your own spot. But anyway, that's that they stole it from the Lord because that's what the Lord did with Israel. Right? He told them, said, no, you're going to camp here, you're going to camp there, and this is where you need to be, and this is where you, uh, these other people need to be. And he told Moses where he was to camp and his family and, and uh, uh, Aaron where him and his family were supposed to camp. And then he told uh, the family of Koath where they were supposed to camp. And Koath uh, camped next to Moses and Aaron, and they ministered right next to Aaron. Now, they could not perform the duties that Aaron performed. You saw that there in verse 15. Okay? We saw that in verse number 15 right there where it said that, uh, that they, they couldn't be there. What would it say? Uh, when Aaron and his sons have made an end of the covering of the sanctuary and all the vessels of the sanctuary as the camp is set forward, after that the sons of Koash shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. So they weren't, they weren't allowed to help to cover up the stuff. They weren't even allowed to stand there and watch. They couldn't even be around until it was all done, said, done, over with. After the work was completed, then Koath got involved. Okay, And that's what pastors do today. After the work of the Lord Jesus Christ is completed, then pastors get involved. Okay, But pastor, the pastor, your preacher doesn't save you. Pastor, your preacher is not your mediator. Okay, There's no given confession to your pastor or what have you. I mean, please don't. There's one meter between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, Koath couldn't do the duties of Aaron. They, their, their, their duty uh, couldn't start till after Aaron's job was completed, after his work was completed. Then Koath got involved. And as all Koath could do was bear the work, move the work forward. That's all he could do. That's all he was allowed to do. They, they Just to carry the work forward. Now, there are some elements here, some things that it talks about. Uh, verse 5 specifically talks about the ark. This is what they're supposed to do with the ark. This is what they're supposed to cover the ark with. So like I said, they weren't allowed just to pack it up any old way they wanted to. The Lord told them a very specific way how it is that they were supposed to pack it up, right? Uh, they're supposed to take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it. They shall put the covering of badger skins and spread it with a cloth holy of blue and shall put in the staves thereof, right? The staves, those are those poles they used it to carry it with. Because the Kohathites, they were supposed to carry the holy things. They carry them. They, they weren't supposed to put them on, on a, a wagon, which they tried to do over in 2 Samuel. It didn't work out so good for them, if you'll remember. All right? They're supposed to carry them. 
and carry it forward. That's what they were supposed to do. Now, the ark, of course, in the Old Testament is a picture and a type of the sacrificial work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where they took all the, that's where they took all the, uh, the, uh, the, the offerings and things to, and they had the mercy seat thereof, and that's where God, God uh, uh, communed with them and dwelt with them, and that's a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, type of the sacrificial work that Jesus did. And it says here that they were to cover it with badger skins. Uh, they covered it with badger skins because badger skins were typified in uh, a type of the uh, flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ because he did his work for us in the flesh. And the outer covering was in blue. And blue is, is uh, showing the, uh, the divinity, the divinity that was involved. And the outer covering was the blue. That's why we preach the Lord Jesus Christ as he is, as the Son of God the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. We preach that Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is God. God manifests in the flesh. Jesus Christ. We preach the son of God. We don't just preach the man Christ. There's plenty of people that just preach the man Christ. Oh yeah, he was a good man. He was a good prophet. He did good things and, and all that kind of stuff. But then they deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why it, the outer covering was a blue, was to show out that yeah, he came as a man, but he's the Lord. But he's the Lord. So the duty of the Christian is to point people to Jesus. That's all of our duty. Not just the Kohathites, not just the pastors, if you want to spiritualize it for us. The duty of the Christian is to point people to Jesus. Next thing you see is the showbread. The showbread shows up in verse number 7. The showbread is pointing to the words of God. The way the showbread was laid out, they had a table and they had 12 loaves of bread and they put 6 loaves and 6 loaves. They didn't just put 12 across. He put 6 and 6. That's 66. We have 66 books in our Bible. It's not a coincidence. Uh, the showbread is the only thing in the Bible that's mentioned here that has three different coverings. It has a covering of blue, a covering of scarlet, and then finally a covering of badger skins. The only thing that has three coverings. It's important to uh, pay attention to and to notice. Uh, the covering of blue, again, is showing that it's coming from heaven. The Word of God came from heaven. Uh, the Word of God came in the Old Testament in Hebrew. The Word of God came in the Old Testament as God came down from heaven and he spoke to Moses as a man uh, man speaks to a man as a friend with a friend. And the Lord wrote the uh, the original Ten Commandments, the Lord wrote them with his own finger on the ta tablets of stone. So the Word of God came in Hebrew first and foremost. Next it says it's covered in scarlet. Well in the New Testament it's written in Greek and the New Testament is where we, we see that the Lord uh, made the sacrifice for us. Hence scarlet. And then finally the badger skins. Uh, you know, the, uh, the only time the Bible, the first time the Bible was all put together in one book, it was in English. It was in English. So the Lord's brought his, his word in three different languages. Greek, Hebrew, which people are all in love with and, 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 and want to chase all day long, or every day, when they don't even have any idea how it even works. And then uh, finally in English. You know, the whole Bible, in, you know, they don't have the whole Bible in Hebrew. They don't have the whole Bible in Greek, right? People talk about the Septuagint. You know, the Septuagint didn't really exist. Don't have time to get into all that, but it's in English. So the next duty that we have as a Christian is to point people to the Word of God. We need to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to point people to the Word of God. The next thing talked about here is the candlestick. The candlestick points to illumination. Illumination comes from above. It was covered with blue. It was covered with blue. And uh, illumination comes from above. Illumination comes from the Holy Spirit. That's what the Lord said. The Lord said that he was going to send the Holy Spirit uh, and, and uh, make all things known unto us. So another duty as a Christian is that we're, we're supposed to point people uh, to the Holy Spirit for truth. For truth. Verse 11, he talks about the golden altar of incense and how, how, it, was, uh, how it was to be covered. Uh, the, the golden altar there, that's where, they, that's, that's where they burnt the incense and things, which are a type of prayers in the Bible. Uh, so the, the blue there would point to the direct line that we have to the throne of grace, according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16. And the badger skins, of course, would just represent you. Would represent the believer. Represent the believer. We could keep going on and on and on about all these things that they were covered and what, and what, what significance they all had and everything else. 
but but for the sake of time, we'll leave we'll leave it there. Um, because what I want to really get into here is uh, what, what the title of the message is here is, how, you know, uh, how important are you? How important are you in all this stuff, right? This is all stuff that Aaron did. This is all stuff that the Lord did, right? The Lord is the one who made it possible for us to have a direct line uh, with the throne of grace, right? The Lord is the one who, who made the sacrifice for us. The Lord is the one who has, has given us the word. Uh, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, okay? It came from him. Uh, all these things came came from the Lord. So 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 what does this what does this have to do uh, with us? And ha- how do we how do we see how important we are in the uh, in the ministry, if you were? Or how important are we in the work of the Lord? Do we even matter? Does it even matter if we show up or not? Does it matter if we do the things that uh, we were called to do or not? Does it matter if we if we if we fulfill the duties that the Lord has given us or not? Does it even really matter? Well, the first thing that we want to look at here is look at verse number eighteen of chapter 4, and uh, the Lord spake unto Moses in verse 17 there, in verse 18, he says, cut ye not off the tribe of the families of the Kohathites from among the Levites. So he's saying, don't cut them off. So in other words, don't make them uh, different than the rest of the Levites. They have a different job. They have a different job. So I would I would submit to you as a pastor, a pastor has a different job than other people in the congregation have, but that doesn't make the pastor special. That doesn't make the spa- pastor better than anybody else. And that's what the Lord is saying here, Lord. He's saying, hey, look, uh, the Kohathites here, they're, they, yeah, they got a different job, and, and yeah, they're, they're the minister right next to the high priest and all that, but that doesn't make them any better. The job that they do isn't any more important than anybody else's job, as he's getting ready to lay out here what everybody's jobs are, as we look down through here. So uh, there's no hierarchy of importance here. Uh, they just had different duties, and the same things hold true today. Like I said, spiritually speaking, the Kohathites would be would be likened to pastors and teachers and and the the Gershonites and and the uh, Mariites uh, would be like just the rest of the congregation and they each had different duties to do it's not like okay well well uh, you're a pastor you're a teacher this or that or whatever and everybody else is just in the congregation they don't really matter it's fine if they're here fine if they're not here fine if they do stuff fine if they don't do stuff it's not that way at all it's very important Everything that is done is very important. Everything that is done, all the duties that are given, are, are, are exceptionally important in order to ensure that the work can move forward. Okay? So, so we, we, looked, we looked here at Aaron's duties. We looked at Coas duties. Coas duties were, were to bear all the things that Aaron, that Aaron covered up. Right? The Coas duties were to bear the work. To bear the work. Uh, next, you look at Gershon. Gershon's duties. You see that in Numbers chapter twenty-four or uh, chapter four, ver- Numbers chapter four, verse twenty-four, through verse number twenty-eight, uh, where the Bible says, "This is a service of the families of the Gershonites to serve and for burdens, and they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tabernacle of the congregation, his covering." and the coverings of the badger skins that is above upon it, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hangings of the court, and the hangings for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and their cords, and all the instruments of their service, and all that is made for them, so shall they serve. At the appointment of Aaron and his sons shall all the service of the sons of the Gershonites, and all their burdens, and all their service, and ye shall appoint unto them in charge all their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation, and their charge shall be under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. So the Gershonites, they were responsible for all the coverings. They are responsible for the tent that covered over the top of the ta- tabernacle. They are they're responsible for all the coverings that went round about the courtyard. As, as it was segregated, and and and, and they had uh, coverings for gates, and they had coverings for walls, so people couldn't just see in there and see what was going on. Their job was to carry all the coverings. You think, wow, that doesn't sound so so nice and so. so and that, that doesn't really sound all that hard. That's, I mean, the the the, the Kohathites, man, they got to carry everything by hand and everything. He doesn't tell them they have to carry it by hand. Right, they're 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 able to use wagons and stuff. They're going to get wagons later on, and they're they're allowed to use wagons and horses and and mules and carts and, and the whole ten yard and everything else. And, and, but I don't know if you've ever tried to carry a tent. I mean, like a real tent. I don't mean like a little pup tent that you you know get from Walmart. I mean like a tent like we got that we use like for tent meetings and stuff. 
no thanks. Those, those, those things were heavy. Their job was to carry the coverings. They had to carry all the coverings and, and, and move around. The, the coverings of the fence that were round about and everything else. So, so, so what does that have, have to do with anything? Well, the coverings are, are a type of, for us, if we're going to relate this to ourselves, because that's what we want to try to do. We want to try to take this and relate this to ourselves the best we, way we can, you know, devotionally and all that. And, and so we're looking at this, we're like, okay, so if the Kohathites are like pastors and teachers, then who would the Gershonites be? And the Gershonites would be uh, all the ministries that are involved in the church that are visible. Because the coverings were visible. They weren't invisible. It would be pretty hard to carry them around if they were invisible. Right? They were visible. It's things that people can see. Right? So, so this, this would be all, all the things that people could see. Right, people could see music, musicians as they're up here playing playing music. People could see uh, the singers, singers as they're singing. People could see uh, the children's workers as they come and go with the kids and and working with the kids or whatnot. And people people could see uh, you know ushers taking the offering and different things like that. They're the things that people can see. So that's what the Gershonites are a type of. And then you have Merari. You have you have you have his his folks. So so what are they? What what do they do? Well, what is their job? Well, you look at chapter tw- or chapter four. I don't know why I keep saying chapter chapter four, verse twenty nine. You see the duties of the Merariites. As for the sons of Merari, thou shalt number them after their families by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, shalt thou number them. Every one that entereth into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and this is the charge of their burden. According to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation, the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof and the pillars thereof and the sockets thereof and the pillars of the court round about and their sockets and their pins and their cords with all their instruments and with all their service and by name you shall reckon the instruments of the charge of their burden. This is a service of the families of the sons of Merari according to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. All right, so what's this talking about? They get to carry all the fence posts. They get to carry all the fence posts. The boards, the posts, the pillars, the pins that put them together. That's what they got to carry. They got to carry all that stuff. And uh, what what is that what what is that uh, similar to, or what would that be uh, compared to today? That'd be compared. Uh, th- th- those were structural items. Those were things that were behind the scenes structural. That hey, look, the tent couldn't stand up, the walls couldn't stand up if they didn't have the structure. The structure is required, but you don't really see the structure. Thank yourselves that you can't see the structure behind, underneath us, or above us in this room right now. They're invisible to you. They're not visible. You don't see them. And be, just be thankful. Just trust me. Just be thankful. These are, the, these are all the things that people don't necessarily see. But there are still things that happen. There are things that have to happen in order for the ministry to move forward. Whether, whether it's talking about you know, maintenance is done, whether it's talking about cleaning that's done, whether it's talking about uh, lawn care that's done, whether, whether it's talking about you know, shoveling snow or, or wh- whatever it might be. All right? th- th- things that you don't, you don't see them happen, but they just happen. A track procurement, right? Somebody, some, some, somebody right? make sure that we always have gospel tracks. Keeps them organized and all that kind of stuff. Takes care of that for us, right? Uh, uh, we have some sort of an AV ministry, right? That stuff just happens behind the scenes. Just, just kind of happens. It's just there, right? It, it's not all just miraculous, right? That pe- pe- people are behind this. You know, the, the church is clean. Every time you come in, the church is clean. Be thankful the church is clean. Be thankful we don't pass around a list. Say, okay, this week it's your turn, Caitlin. Right? These, these are things that are important for the structure of the ministry, important, the things that have to occur. But people don't really notice them. People don't really re- realize. Some, somebody has to maintain the piano. Somebody has to uh, uh, tune the instruments and all these different kinds of things. Somebody has to make sure they got good strings on them and, uh, and all that kind of stuff and whatever else it takes. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you. Right? These things are going on behind the scenes. Uh, financial duties. Right? Somebody make sure the light bill gets paid every month. The water bill gets paid every month. You have water. You have lights. You have coffee back there. These are things that happen behind the scenes. All these, everybody is involved in the work. That's the point. 
Look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm, I'm trying to give you a lot of information in a really short amount of time, so it probably seems like I'm rushing. Not like from Moscow, but I'm, I'm rushing. There's a lot of information. A lot of information. I've been re- reading through these things and everything, and, and, and the, same, the same thing just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up and coming up and coming up to me is, is, is the fact that, number one, the Lord expects things to be done a specific way. He has specific duties set apart for specific people to do, and it's extremely important to the ministry as to whether they do them or not. Everybody is involved in the work. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members... And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and we have all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God had tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Well, that's my point. point is everyone is involved in the work. Everyone's involved in the work. Just like here we got the Kohathites, you got the uh, Gershonites, and you got the Merariites. They're all involved in the work. And, 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 and they all have different duties. They have, all have different purposes. But if any one of them didn't, didn't follow their, their duty, if any one of them didn't fulfill their calling, then the work of the Lord could not move forward. It couldn't move forward. Uh, Look, it was time to, to move the camp forward. It's time to go to the next place. And if they got to the next place and the Moriahites decided, I don't feel like carrying poles today, they wouldn't be able to set up the camp. They wouldn't be able to minister. They wouldn't be able to perform the ministry. They wouldn't be able to be the witness out in the wilderness that they were supposed to be because they wouldn't be able to set things up. They'd have to wait. They wouldn't be able to get it completed. What, what, what if the Gershonites decided, you know what, we, you know, we'll, we'll bring half the coverings, but we're not going to bring all of them. Was a problem. Obviously, if the Kohathites didn't did, didn't bear the didn't bear the work and get get the altar and and the, uh, the the ark and all those things there, then it wouldn't matter if they had everything else set up or not because there would be nothing to do. It just be a it just be a building if you were right. Every single element, every single duty, uh, uh, irregardless of where you find yourself in this group of people. Whether you find yourself as a Kohathite or a Gershonite or a Merariite or or whatever or a menagerie or a mixture of of multiples of them, which in a place like this, that's more to the point, right? Uh, but irregardless of where you find yourself, the the duties that you perform, the 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 things that you do for the ministry, they do matter. They do matter. It does matter if you fulfill your calling or not. It does matter. Okay, God's God. Could He do it without you? Of course He could. He could do it without any of us. He doesn't need us per se. He's allowing us to be involved. But it is going to hurt the work of the ministry if you're not fulfilling your call. If you're not doing your duty, it is going to affect the ability of the ministry to move forward. It's just going to be stagnant. It's going to have to, it's going to, have to sit by. It's going to have to wait for all, for, for all the members 
to get in one accord, if you will. So how important are you? You're very important. You're very important. The things that you do, the the the, the, the you know, whether you're you know part of the congregation, whether you're teaching kids, whether whether you're you're doing Bible studies, whether whether you're playing the piano or or or, or some, it, whatever it is, whether you're cutting the grass, whether you're just making sure the plumbing is running right, whether you're making sure the lights are on, it all is very important. Too many times. Too many times. This is probably just my flesh. Okay. But it really irks me off. I think that's okay to say. Probably not. They canceled Dr. Seuss. They probably canceled me. I'd already be canceled. Don't worry about it. Really irritates me. That's probably a better way to say it. Irritates me. Sound better? I'm going to punish. Really irritates me when people act like they don't matter. I don't need to be there. They, they don't need me. I'm nobody anyway. They don't need me. I'm not. I'm not important. I'm nobody. Whatever. That's that's actually false humility. Like, well, that's just being humble. Well, that's false humility because you don't you don't do anything else in your life that way. You don't feel like you don't matter to anybody else in your life. You spend the rest of your life, according to the Google Google uh, searches, people are very concerned about whether they matter to people or not. But somehow in the work of the Lord, oh, I don't matter, I'm nothing, it doesn't matter, everything could go just fine without me. And will it survive without you? Unfortunately, it can. But it's going to suffer. It's going to suffer. Because the Lord has placed you. Look, it said the, the Lord is the one who places the members of the body where it pleases Him. Not where it pleases us, not where we want to be, not what we want to do, but where it pleases Him. It wasn't in my five-year goal plan or 10-year goal plan or 25-year goal plan or 89-year goal plan to be a pastor, but that's where the Lord puts me. And the Lord has placed you where He wants you. And He expects you to fulfill the duties that He has called you to do. I'm sure people, look, we know that some of the Kohathites thought that the duties that they were given, they got the short end of the stick. And they weren't even carrying the sticks. All right, Korah, Korah was a Kohathite. They thought that they should have been able to do Aaron's job. And the Lord showed them that they were quite mistaken. Because they didn't realize that the job that they were doing was important. They, they always thought somebody else's job was better. Somebody else's job was fancier. Somebody else got more attention. And we don't get to be involved in the glory of God and all the wonderful things that we don't get to see. We don't get to see, you know, the fire come down from heaven and devour the... the, the and we don't get to see all that stuff. And it's all we get to do is carry this after it's already covered up. People see us walking down the, down the highway, you know, carrying this big group of badger skins. They don't, even, they don't even appreciate and see what it is that we're doing. They don't even know what we're carrying. We don't get any attention at all. It's not fair. doesn't matter. And it's important. Because what would happen if they didn't do it? The work wouldn't have been able to move on. So we may look at some things and we think, well, well, well that, that's not all that important. That's a big deal. Who cares? Who cares who vacuums the carpets and cleans the toilets and all that? I do because that means I don't have to do it. It seems like that's the kind of thing that I'm responsible to, to make sure it gets done uh, all, all the other days of the week. I'm really glad that the Lord's worked it out that I don't need to worry about that. It matters. It matters. Giving so the lights, the light bill can continue to get paid. You know, they don't respond very well if you don't pay the bill. They don't care if you're a church or not. Matter of fact, they look at us, they treat us like we're a business. Ridiculous. Things that we have to go through really and truly on, on the, uh, in, in the, uh, behind the scenes or whatever. But the Lord has called people to deal with that. If they didn't deal with that, then we'd be sitting in the dark today. Well, that's not really that big of a deal. Really? You would think it was a big deal if we didn't have any lights, if we didn't have any power, we couldn't run the heat or the air or whatever it is that we're running today. I can't tell. I'm, I feel like I'm about 200 degrees up here. Sure would notice if it wasn't getting done. It matters. It all matters. You matter. You matter to the ministry. You matter to me. You matter 
to the other people that are sitting around you. You matter. You might not matter to the world. You might not matter at work. You might not even matter at home. But you matter. So if you're not sure where you fit in in all that stuff and where, what your duties are supposed to be or, or what it is that you should be doing or shouldn't be doing or if you should be doing more or you should be doing, uh, uh, well, nobody should be doing less. But what, whatever it might be, if you're trying to get all that fi- stuff figured out, get it figured out. The altar is open. It's about a nice close, but more important than anything else. We all been talk- This whole message has been about uh, the servants of God and what it is that they need to do. And how it is that they need to fulfill their duty. But if you're not saved today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, none of this stuff probably even made any sense whatsoever to you and didn't, didn't, didn't affect you at all. But what will affect you is if you die today and you don't know for sure that you go to heaven when you die, if you don't know that for sure without a shadow of a doubt, don't leave here without talking to one of us. This altar is open.